Where do you experience the largest forces in an amusement park? Will it be in a large freefall drop tower? Or in one of the major roller coasters? Or maybe in a giant swing? These all reach around 4G or more. However, even larger forces may be found in the children's play area. We brought the measurement equipment to the little trampoline and tried it out. What will the data show? Look at that! It's around 7G for the large bounces, seven times heavier than normal. And in between it shows 0G. You are weightless. Here we show the large bounces in sync with the movie. We can illustrate the forces with a spiral toy, where the spiral is contracted if the toy lies down or is flying in the air. It's slightly expanded for 1G when it's hanging still, and expanded when it accelerates upward. See how it's short both on the way up, at the top and on the way down, and then very much extended at the bottom. Look how low the trampoline bed is at the bottom. We can approximate the force from the trampoline using Hooke's law, which states that the force is proportional to the displacement. For small bounces, this corresponds to an harmonic oscillator motion. For larger bounces, part of the motion is free fall, as soon as you no longer make contact with the trampoline. This graph shows how force, velocity and position vary during a bounce with a maximum trampoline force of 3G. Since the trampoline doesn't pull the user down again, the period increases for higher bounces. This graph compares 3G, 5G and 7G bounces. We are now ready to compare the model to data from bounces in the movie. We see small deviations for the largest force. The trampoline was quite small, so the displacement is a relatively large fraction of the dimension, which leads to small deviations from Hooke's law. How do trampolines differ? Apart from geometry and stiffness, as characterized by the constant K in Hooke's law, they also vary in how much energy is lost for every bounce. An experiment was performed that compared the performance of two trampolines, one that had never been jumped on against one that had been fully broken in. A 15 kg medicine ball was dropped from a height of one and a half metres. Can you predict which trampoline will have the most number of bounces? And why do you think this? Did you notice how the frequency of the bounce increased as the ball bounced less? Let's take a look from below at the bounces on a gymnastic trampoline. Not the enormous displacement at the bottom. In fact, this jump reached over 9G. The graph shows a few of the large bounces and then the smaller and smaller bouncing when the user no longer supplies energy for every bounce. Note again how the period becomes shorter for smaller bounces. Using the theoretical model, we can relate the maximum force to the ratio between the period for high bounces and the period for small bounces that don't leave the trampoline. How much time is spent in the air during the 10 jumps shown here that take a total of about 19 seconds? During large competitions, the air time is measured, and from that you can now estimate how many Gs. And you know that is more than allowed in a roller coaster.